Devrilk on deep dives. Yar. First off, I would love to have both of you introduce yourself and kind of let me know about what you're doing in this space and what you're most excited about this space about. Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Ali Diamond. I am actually super excited about this panel because I, well, first of all, two people that I absolutely love. Um, and second of all, um, the reason why I'm in DevRel today is because I did a champion program with Cassie Williams. Um, six or seven years ago now where I learned how to do DevRel and I it was literally called Clarify Champions and so when Aaron invited me to come on I was like literally this is the reason why I'm here I would be so happy to talk about what makes an effective champions program oh also you can find me everywhere at ending with Allie that's e-n-d-i-n-g-w-i-t-h-a-l-i please follow me on Twitter if you want to see me post weird memes also I use she her pronouns because I think that's important to point out yeah, and she here as well. Pachi, um, would love to have you introduce yourself and a little bit more about you. Hi, I'm Pachi, she hers. Uh, I'm Brazilian, so I'm Brazil right now. Are you sure I put Ali to not long ago? So yes, <laughs> love her. Uh, so I'm working in GitHub now as a developer advocate. And I am the first person in GitHub to focus on growing the Brazilian community. So that's something that I'm super excited about. And yes, um, I'm GitHub now, I'm working on GitHub Stars as a great program. I'm a part of some others. While I was in Relic, I started building a Shantra program that didn't work because, you know, we are doing too much stuff. And yes, but don't work yourselves. So I'm super excited to be here with you all. And thank you so much for inviting me. And for inviting Eileen, so I can be here now. Literally, it's a big I reunion. I know, it's, it I feels so, so fun. Uh, I, this is a fun group, fun things. and. Uh, we get to talk about Champions Program, which is like one of my favorite things in this space that we get to do. Um, and I always joke that one of my most favorite things to do in developer relations or community building is like you get to be the fun high five person. Like you get to help people be the best versions of themselves. Like and it, it, it makes it super exciting. But um, when we think about specifically Champions Program, like what if just kind of overview, um, what is the most crucial thing like? If you're willing to start a champions program before you even start, what is the one thing that you need to do? Like square one, square zero, square negative one. I guess it has, have, it has to have the right people in mind. Like who, what does a champion look like? And what can you give, what can you do for that? Like sometimes champions are like, hey, this person want to represent us, but like, why would they do that? Like, what can you, what value can you offer to them? I mean, not only swag, Swag is great. Swag, yeah, swag is cool, I love, I love but yeah, swag isn't a champions program. Like we like, and I think we say yeah. a lot. Like you get a cool T-shirt, but cool, you're wearing a logo, you're getting a T-shirt. So what? Like a champions program mm -hmm. goes a lot further than just cool swag or a sticker. Like what else came out in recent years? The, uh, I've seen a lot of like temporary tattoos is becoming a new one that's starting to come out. Um, which is another one. Um, Ali, what would you start with? Um, I would first start with understanding what's the what is your goal with creating the champions program because for example while I did a champions program for learning how to be a devrel is that necessarily like what is the purpose of that like I can understand why as a devrel or as a devrel wanting to create more devrels because you can get them to create interesting projects and go out and and apostolize I think is the right word uh is that a word apostolize okay, yeah. evangelize uh, evangelize yeah, yeah. i don't like i don't know i used to i i yeah. started back when the term de developer evangelist was a thing and i'm like i'm jewish so this is uncomfortable <laughs> yeah uh <laughs> so apostolize <laughs> you, so, like they had us go out and apostolize at hackathons and sort of create mini Debrels at hackathons like is that what you're going for are you looking for people to create interesting products are you looking to create like a really dope core community who you can go and do testing with and get direct feedback on products. Like what is your point of your champions program? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that's a good point. Cause we've seen some champions programs, like there's a good sister act of like the relationship between champions programs and beta programs. Like they're very, there's two very similar yeah. programs, yeah. but they have two different functions. Like for a beta program, you're likely to get that more, experienced user of your product, someone who's in it every day. They're usually the person who like tries to break a lot of things. I'm an avid beta tester and I'm always breaking all the things that my friends work on um, in our own app. So love it. Um, but a champion is a kind of a different persona, some would say, 
or could they ever be the same in y'all's opinion? I think, I think that personally, like if you have a strong rapport with a certain community and also your champions, Mm -hmm. like when you're picking a champion, whether that is like um, someone who applies or someone that you handpick, they're going to be avid users of your program. So I think that even giving them the chance to be a beta tester elevates that champion responsibility Mm -hmm. and elevates that expectation of what they do as a champion. You don't always have to expect them to be beta testers, but like it makes them feel special. The whole point of a champion program is to make them feel special. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. like uh, I agree. What do we have like with the GitHub sponsors? We had to have like cows that they can show new features, and they can go. They don't have to, but it's open for other start. So now, if you want to be into this new cool thing that we are doing, you're super welcome to give us feedback. But if you don't want to, just want to be here, you know, so you can show off your cool secrets. That's cool too. So I I, I like that. That's that's a possibility. It's not mandatory. So for you to keep these titles. Was a nice yeah, yeah, and I think there's a there's always the other fun thing because I think um, and this is something I've encountered at my last role um, was kind of a pain point in champions programs, and I think this is we're gonna start talking about the scary dark pain point stuff, and I think this is important to go over is Devrel and community. Oftentimes, you're like interacting with other parts of your organization. And people are like, great, let's start a champions program. And then it's like, all of a sudden, you're like, whoa, this is an influencer program, and this is now a marketing thing, which is not what I wanted to do. And it is not achieving the goal that you wanted to achieve. How would you say a champions program can help your organization or like think about, you know, how it interacts with other parts of the organization internally? Like maybe it is, a you know, works closer with marketing. Yeah, I think that one of the first things you can do to separate it from an influencer program is, in my opinion, giving education and and using and instead of instead of expecting your champions to highlight your work you're highlighting your champions work mm-hmm. so yeah. i I'll, so education and highlighting their own work not expecting and not only picking champions who are highly influential which i know that there are some some champions programs which i think the aws community builders might require some sort of community growth in that aspect but don't quote me on that i have never looked into it before but i think that it, the term community builders probably means something which is why i'm saying that uh, but uh, continuing some sort of in some form of education and, and uplifting your community members because they're not always going to be highly impactful like not excuse me highly community attached people but instead are just co- doing cool things that need to be highlighted mm-hmm. yeah i think we'll go back to what alice said in the very beginning like what's your goal like ha- if you have your goal with this program really clear from the get-go so when you get to the point and if you see that it's like getting out getting the tours say, hey let's go back to this and again people don't have it's not because the person is not, you know, I have 10,000 followers on Twitter, but there's a lot of people that do great work in the background of community, right? Like for this event, for example, you're three with the beautiful faces, but Manuel is in the background, he's doing a great job. Like how many other people are there? And if you don't know, you're there watching. You don't have you don't know their names, you don't know their faces, but they're doing an awesome job. So just keep it in heart, like what is this program go? And what do you want to do? If you want a number, it's one of your to go far away so have the influencers might make sense you know but if you really want to get to the people's hearts and have a bigger impact so where do you want to go who you want to attend yeah and i think that's a good a good point and i i can't believe we i'm like going over here and i, I realized we dove really quick in the weeds without even addressing like what is a champions program in the first place so i think you know um and that's totally on me but like how like let's go over what is a champions program what does it look like what are the key tenets of it when you're getting started and how do you get started and like i mean maybe it's like ali like how did you i'd love to hear your story of like how you got involved in devrel because of this Yes. Yeah, well, I'm going to actually pass off the, to answering those series of questions to Pachi because Pachi's working on it. <laughs> she has worked on it. And so I think that my perspective is a little different coming in from, from doing champions programs and Pachi's building mm-hmm. champions programs. So I'm going to let Pachi mm-hmm. answer that and then I'll come in and answer how I got involved. Okay, so champions yeah. programs. Um, there are cool things. <laughs> so basically, champions program is a way that a company or a community can highlight people that are doing a great job 
or people that are, they make sense for what you're doing. Like, you know, for example, and they're going to be using GitHub stars because that's what we're doing. So we are looking for people in Brazil that they're inspiring. So, you know, you want these people in your community. These people are like, when they talk, you say, hey, I want to be their friends. But they are also, you know, technical. They have something to teach because our focus is developers. So something that you can look up to, you can go, uh, not, not only look up to, but you can go to for information and education. And the person going to answer you. <laughs> and the person going to care about you. And for us, no, what do you do? This person is a star, they get cool swag, they get insights on what are we doing, they get invited to speak and talk. But again, that's what I a lot. So, but in some, a champion is somebody that you're going to highlight. Somebody that's special and get cool stickers and somebody that you should follow and be friends with. Yeah, and I, I think like to add one thing onto that, a champions program is really... Um, like someone you really want to, it's a way of rewarding the people who have uh, grown with you or helped you grow to the community. I think mm-hmm. in community we do like, especially in open source, like a lot of that work is done for free. No one's making a dollar. Yes. And I personally, I'm like, pay your people, pay your people, pay people, pay fair wages. But um, I think my biggest thing is like, it's a way of acknowledging and it's a way of providing the organization, especially when they're ran by companies. It's a way of a win it's creating win-win scenarios like it's a way for the mm-hmm. company to learn a lot about their early users and also it's a way of thanking those who helped you get to where you are today and so you mm-hmm. see that mutual growth happening um which is very much great segue into how ali is here today she's now a devrel folk and she's killing it but all because of a champions program yeah. Um, okay. So my champion's journey starts off with, I mean, it's literally like my career journey. How did Allie get into DevRel? Many moons ago, Cassidy Williams posted an article about how to do the cold email. And I had already seen her align at hackathons and things like that, killing the game. And so I sent her a cold email being like, I just read your cold email article. I'm going to be in New York. This is when she was living in New York. I'm going to be in New York. I would love to meet with you. I talk with her. She gets to know me. Um, I get to know her and I'm like, I'm going to continue following what you're doing because I think what your job is doing is really cool. I always knew that Deborah was a really interesting opportunity for me because I love talking, interacting and being in developer communities, but also it's a really cool way to do like rapid prototyping, getting to build things really quickly. They don't have to be perfect, but then at the same time, like they get seen by lots of people. There's just so many cool benefits to being in DevRel. And so when I saw that she was doing this Clarified Champions, I think they had done it like once or twice prior to me, to prior to mine, but don't quote me on that. I applied. I didn't realize how many people were going to apply. I think like a couple hundred applied and only like 20 people got in. And the entire, the program took place from like September to December, where once a month we had lectures with the Clarify team, the Clarify DevRel team, where they sort of walked us through like what it means to be an effective DevRel, whether that's like how to give good talks, how to write good blog posts, like how to um, go out and build demos, things like that. And then we would have, we had this Slack group where we all sat and we talked about what we were working on um and then we would like have monthly like off or weekly office hours where we could get together and talk if we wanted to and it's actually really interesting because now some of my closest friends in the devrel space are through that program like prince wilson nick walsh like so many people like that i realize now are absolutely killing oh lizzie siegel like all these people who are absolutely killing the devrel game came from this program which is so crazy like that i think about it i'm like oh i think i did my program with them and so i did this program and honestly when I was going out and looking for DevRel roles, companies were like, you actually did this program that taught you this championship program that taught you how to do DevRel, taught you how to use our product. Like, this is really helpful for us because we're looking to start a DevRel program, whether it's champion or not. They were just looking to start DevRel. I'm like, I have this experience. Here you go. And they're like, let's go. So that's kind of what happened. Well, and I think um, in the kind of the core, if we think about DevRel or community as a function, I love this story because it's a way of kind of really getting your users building with your product, your maintainers involved, your 
and leveling up skills from everybody. Like you, like when you do a champions program effectively, you level up the collective skills of the community, of your contributors, of your volunteers, of your organization, even the people working with it. Like I can think of our kind of our core at orbit. We call them like satellites. Um, I can think of our core satellite folks. And we're like really thinking about how they approach what we're doing when the things that they make, which is like always, and that's my exciting thing. I'm like, what did you make this week? This is the coolest thing to learn about. Um, all right, we got to go to the dark side. Um, but like, is there any pitfalls that can happen? Like, when do we see champions programs kind of go wrong or go rogue? Uh, first and foremost, when you're, whenever you're starting any program, no matter whether it's starting a community Slack, a champions program, anything that involves people outside of your job, please, like in your first five things you publish about this, publish a code of conduct publish a code of conduct because it is so important to have a way in order to protect your community from day one where they are very aware of like for example the steps and what is good what is bad and what are the steps that are taken in order to reprimand that so there's mm -hmm. no confusion as to what may be an issue i think that's in my opinion super mm -hmm. important and that's a way that that champion programs can fall apart is allowing mm -hmm. bad actors and not having the right way to resolve those issues yes i would really really like that it's not enough to have a code of say hey this is not cool you have to say hey this is what's going to happen if you do that because just say hey okay don't be a bad person that's no okay and what I'm gonna do that, but nobody's gonna keep me accountable. So really have accountability for that. And if somebody does something that doesn't agree with the community, you just you get out. And that's no. I think what really makes an effective code of conduct is again like outlining what the steps are like what is strike one what is strike two what happens yes. in strike two what happens in strike three and like what are the like eight cases where you can supersede the code of conduct like how extreme and, and allowing like community discretion to be able to in um, having a way for community members to easily report issues anonymously mm -hmm. or not anon anonymously and or and take them seriously mm -hmm. every time mm -hmm. i think the uh, like i always like i love these like importance on that safety is like in all of these community things anytime you're working with people safety and everything is like first and foremost a super big priority you can't do if no one feels safe to be who they are you can't create anything um but I think the other thing I my two rules is I've started adding what do you what are we what do you what do we do and what do we don't do in a program. So this program is for X, Y, Z. It's for people who love the product, people who love making tutorials about the product, people who like X, Y, Z beta testing. And this program is not for an interview process. It's not for us to play favorites. It's not for. And clearly, like things like compensation of like if you are compensating someone, make it public. Um, I think that's a fair, fair statement. Um, and the last one is like I learned a really good trick of, and I don't remember who I picked this up from, but it was a uh, this server or this community is not subject to your definition of fairness. And that's one that I kind of have in your back pocket because it's a, hey, I don't like you're on our turf. Um, and for the sake of our community, we, this is why it's not allowed. And it obviously that is a very sparingly used rule and very subjective, but it's kind of a, we're not doing that here. That's okay. If you think that this is something else, what we need to do. Um, and I think that's an important one when we think of champions programs. And I'm curious to get y'all's takes of like the expectations from a community member. So I've seen champions program that require a lot of like, you have to publish five pieces of content a week. You have to, you know, or like, not a week. That's a lot. Um, I'm like, I don't even do that now. Like, uh, as soon like, as you said that, I'm like, that, no, I'm like that's a full-time job. Pay them. Yeah. <laughs> like a tutorial a quarter or make a feedback, give, like give feedback without a recent time standard. Um, but what are the, like, what differentiates a champions program from a full-time content creator? <laughs> I guess it's just being optional. Like you don't have to. Hey, you have to create one article a month. No, hey, we have space for that. Like we have space in this conference, and we'd love for you to give a talk if you want. Or like you know, we're releasing this new feature, and it you know, makes sense with your job. So we'd like to write an article for that. So being optional. Hey, if you do that, you're gonna highlight your work. You're gonna put your name out there, but you don't have to. And I think that's what makes the difference. 
Yeah. I think I think also to sort of build on that, like the people that are you're putting into your championships programs are already either one doing that or two want to do that. Mm-hmm. And so you're giving them the space for your company to promote that content, but you're not like obviously having some sort of expectation of of deliverables in a way. And I, I don't like saying that because it does sound like a job, but there needs to be some sort of criteria to continue to remain involved in a championship program. You can't just pick to be a part of it and then do nothing. I think that that's a little unfair uh, because there are other people who are really also very qualified and there's only so many spots in a, in a champion program. What are you doing as a champion? Unless like your champion program is just, you're a champion, here's some stickers. Like if you want a really involved champion program, it's super important that you're working with your community and also having leniency and grace when it comes to your community members. Say they don't deliver one, one quarter, like talk to them, be like, Hey, like you didn't do this. What's wrong? Is everything okay? How can our team support you? Yeah. You didn't get this one deliverable done, but done, but like, is there something wrong? Like, is this, is there like, we're very lenient and understanding say there's like a family crisis. Like fine. Like that's a very lenient and understanding a reasonable thing to not have a thing. But if it's just like, I didn't feel like doing it, then it's like, Hey, like, do you want to continue being in this champion program? If not, like we're happy to part ways with you. Like, um, we'd love to continue to have you be a part of our community like things like that i think it's a you bring up this idea of like seasonality right like where you do like i i don't like the word cohorts but like it's kind of almost like a cohort like it's like here's a cohort of you know people in uh, this year or your season or semester like your fall 2020 um but it's kind of this idea of like having them in and like allowing for the opt out if you want that i think that's such an important thing of like hey if you're over this and you no longer want to be here how do you get the heck out of the champions program but just leave uh, the discord i'm out bye yeah bye Irish, goodbye the discord yeah (laughs) donate your donate the shirts to goodwill like that's the that's like a wow we're really done in tech for just donating their t-shirts to goodwill that's um (laughs) But uh, on that note, um, Paji, I know you're starting a new program up right now. And it's like, I'm very excited to like watch you build this. This is like very dirty. I'm going to fangirl here for a second because I'm very excited about the bilingual nature of like building programs globally. And like, how can we better be more inclusive? Or this is like opening it up to like getting into inclusivity and tra- inclusivity in your champion program. Like, how do we make sure that we're creating a fair playing field, an equitable playing field? It's hard. Like you had to have people local. That's not all they were around. Like um, for the GitHub Stars, as a global, you can see the numbers right now for people that are speaking English versus Portuguese and Spanish. It's huge. Like I think you have thirty-two stars English speakers. We have eight speak Portuguese and two that speak Spanish. And but why? Because we want quality people, right? So if you don't know the Brazilian community. How do you know that this person is going to be a really good fit and a good relay image for that? So you can do just so much if you don't have somebody that's local. And I mean, that's why I got hired and that's what I'm working on. So they have the base of the program already. So what I'm going to be doing is take you to the next level. Like every person that is nominated, I'm going to go down and say, hey, this person is cool, but why? Does it make, does it make sense? There are people there like they may be like, super cool and like, even famous in the program and in the community but are they a good fit right because you know people on twitter they are great but um the the message the things that they say are really cool like you know what is the chance of this person in six months say something not awesome on twitter and if they do and they are a star how are you going to react to that so last last year last year we had somebody that was very famous in the international community and she was actually a very toxic person. And that, you know, she was an MVP. She was, uh, I think she was a, D, a GDE. So she had about lots of little trophies. So, and that was really nice to see how quickly everything dropped her. So, hey, we didn't know that she was like that. And she was actually, no. She, she just like really, lots of people. I remember that great. happening on Twitter. I remember that. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Coming out and how fast communities were to react. That was really big. Yes. Yeah. So I think it's really. I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. 
No, I'm just going to finish and I know. Okay. So we have have somebody local. You can know that that is not gonna sound awesome, but you know the local gossip that is important when you bring people onto your brand and to your community. Yeah. Be honest, be transparent with your brand. Know what you stand for and know what your brand stands for. Um I'm a big, I'm a big, big fan of um, y'all, for those of you who are new or meeting me for the first time, I have a journalism background. I have an ethics journalism background. So it's very, did not, did not come through a champions program. Um, I kind of fell into the community world. Uh, but you know, from the journalism world, I'm a big believer in publishing, like, this is what we're doing. This is what you as an individual are doing, but it's okay to like run a reference check. If you are looking for a very, like a speaker, a, you know, if for those larger opportunities, it's okay to ask around. That's totally normal. And it is also okay. Give the benefit of the doubt, especially when we're thinking global and we're thinking, you never know, different cultures act different ways. And, you know, I always take the, the attitude of you, if someone saw you on your worst day, would you want that to be a judge of your character? Like give a warning, slide in the DMs, give a, obviously there's some things like you got to be real. Like there's some no tolerance stuff, but mm -hmm ask a question and just kind of do the, yo, you good. And then we can, we can, we can deescalate of like the, after we've gone, you good, we can deescalate to the, yeah, that can't fly here. And we're not doing that. And if you do this mm -hmm. again, consequences, but and Pachi, like one of the things I love you mentioned is that locality, especially in Brazil, because you do have Spanish and Portuguese speaking, you know, you, it's really important to making sure like the local area is represented. Um, and it like, it doesn't help to like, if I were to fly to Brazil and be like, I would be a terrible champions program for Brazil. Cause they'd be like, what? no, like it doesn't make sense to transplant someone in hire like locally from the community. Mm -hmm. I think also something special about community uh, champions programs is the fact that you can do sort of local, like not all companies have the opportunity to do what GitHub is doing with Pachi, which is like so massive, especially Brazil being such an up and coming country in, in, in with Pachi there now. I think that Pachi is really going to flip the switch. I'm so excited for her. Um, but like even the smaller countries, like if you find one champion there and um, you can give them the proper support that they need, they can like, almost operate on their own in a way and you can mm -hmm. support them to host events and really find local developers who can even represent and like you know that might turn into what is like some sort of part-time employment giving them money in order to help run a more effective local mm -hmm. um, community program giving them like flying out and giving them support to help run mm -hmm. local events for your product which is super cool i think a lot of people like i've heard like mm -hmm. there's a lot of companies who do that um and just being like super um, inclusive because having like, ha there is more to the developer community beyond the English speaking communities. And yes. I think that's super important that like a lot of companies don't think about. And so like, whenever mm -hmm. like i i think what was super cool back when i was at new relic was like i literally went to the to the the barcelona office and i was like speaking to everyone there because i just wanted to like talk to developers who were there and like meet the the teams in different countries because like you don't really think about that a lot and so community programs are really great ways to effectively globalize your product and also get them involved yes I, yes, I I love that. And internal companies like encourage native language speaking in the workplace. Like, I we have a, a a large number of folks at Orbit who speak French, and we actually have a if you need help and English is your second language and you need help learning English, we have a Learn English channel, and then we have a Learn French channel. So I've been trying to learn That's French, cool. and it's been kind of cool to even just like see that and embrace that. But the world's global, y'all. Like the internet is no bounds. We need to embrace multiple languages and. This kind of like brings up to a thing that I see is a kind of a personal pet peeve of mine is like when you always see the same five people at a program and you're like, cool, great. <laughs> ask and like my the tip that I got from someone else, but I'm also curious to hear if you all have any tips is ask someone new to the community who they look up to. And it's like, like the that. it's like how do you bring someone new to the community, see who they look up to and like ask them like what blogs do they read? What newsletters do they subscribe to? Mm. What's a funny, like, even like, what funny Twitter accounts do you follow? Because then you can get to know their sense of humor. And like, mm. so, ugh, love. Um, what are your ties' tips? Um, so I don't know if this is like my toxic trait or whatever, but if I'm starting a new job, I literally won't look at anything. 
Like I will not look at anything until my first day on the, like, I'll do enough to like be able to get the job, but then I won't do anything until I get there. And then the second I get there, I'm like, what can I do as a new user to make this even better? And I feel like, like talking to your new community members is a great way to do that. Ask them because mm -hmm. like more diverse people are joining every day. And if you're going to the same five people, of course, it's going to be the same five people. Like, oh, I have so many feelings mm -hmm. about this. I'm not going to go into my rant. I'm not going to, because my rant is not about communities, about venture capital. I'm not going to rant about it. Ah! But please, please just talk to your new community members. I promise they're there and they want to talk to you and it'll make them feel like, honestly, something as simple as like, hey, welcome to the community. I saw that you're new here. I saw that you're new to the product. I would love to ask you some questions like as a new user, because that is the most valuable feedback that you can get because your company is consistently trying to onboard new people onto your product. Why are you not talking to them trying to make that aspect better? You can curate and define your deep, like your deeper use cases more and more later down the line, but like you should consistently be talking to your new users. Sorry. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> ah! <laughs> I, I forgot what was the question. <laughs> How do we make sure we're not adding like the same five people in uh, champions program? Yes. I say five, uh, like a very like that's a very general number I threw up there. I mean, I'm gonna use our example. We are very Twitter people. So how who are you following Twitter? Like just really look at the speech book. Okay, are all white men. So I go to the people that are not white men and I see who they are following you and why they follow them. So uh, like I have a great example. So I am co-founder of a community of women and nominated people in tech. And the number of trans women in the community is growing so much because of the first trans person that was there and she just felt welcome and she felt home and she just keep killing people. So I guess like right now, 30% of the women in the community are trans. And because you just watch out, say, hey, who are you following? Why am I following these people? Who who are they listening to? So every time that it goes to the person of a uh, minority a diversity group, and they tend to follow people from their groups, and they tend to follow good content. So you just really check out your follower list on Twitter. And really go to that. Once a month, you have to see who you're following, where you're following them, because everything that you consume on Twitter is, I know you spend a lot of time there, okay? So if you're following good people, you're gonna consume great content. If you're following like questionable people, the things that go to your brain are not awesome. <laughs> also, um, I love that. I love that so much. Um, and like, even just like that emphasis on making your early users feel welcome and included. And like, that's why you have a diverse champions program. So you're always meeting someone new. I always love like, on my list of questions, it's like, who do you like? What do you do? who inspires you is always another one that I love to ask. Um, and the, instead of like relying on the Twitter natural like algorithm, I use tweet deck a lot to like find new people um, or we'll have people share is like a, the other tip that I like love to use. Um, but I think these are all really great. Making people feel welcome from the start, making feel, people feel included. How do you get buy-in internally for a champions program? Um, Cause I think this is another problem. Like, all of us here and many of the folks listening in at the developerrelations.com event in DevRelCon, it's great, but like when you're turning around and you gotta go report those numbers and I'm very fortunate now, I work at a community company who gets it, but if I had to flash back to older jobs, I'm like, oh, oh got some, there's some horror stories in my past I gotta think about reporting I, I numbers. I think that's a little different, difficult. I mean, I think most important is understanding like what is your company looking to do right now? Is your company looking to like bring on more high quality engineers using your product then a champions program is a great way to do that but if that's mm -hmm. not like obviously growth in different ways, growth uh companies have growth measured in different ways and what they're um. looking for but like it might not be the time. Like honestly, you might want to start a, a champions program but like especially with DevRel, what's most important is that you're consistently aligning what you're working on with what the company is going towards instead of operating solo. Because if you are because if you go off and do your own thing, the company is not going to understand what value you're adding to the current metrics, to the current goals. So mm -hmm. figuring out what is that part of your current goals. Yes, and if you're going to start the program without the full support, it's going to fail and then you're going to try that again. 
So like that's why the program that we started playing in Rally, we didn't really ship that because there wasn't the right time. So I could have shipped that and then it would be that and I could be that school on my closet and that would be shame enough. So it's better to hold off until people are really understanding the value of that and they can really mm-hmm. show that. Then it starts something that going to, one, not be great or second, like die in six months. Yeah. And I think that's a really good point. Um, I'm a big fan, like, you know, to both of those points, like, A, touching on Ali, what you said, like, if like that, those regular check-in cadences of like, are we aligned? Are we doing the right thing? Um, and the that goes both ways. I think in community and DevRel, we have a weird roles because not only do we have to be our external community managers, sometimes because of the way that our roles are, uh, you have to be the internal community manager as well, just because community and DevRel kind of sits at the intersection of like the rest of the company. And so you're, you kind of are the person who knows everything that's going on internally as well. Um, so it's a lot of juggling a lot of messages. I think I, I was messaging Ali earlier and it was like, what one of the 17,000 platforms am I messaging you on? And we're just replying to a different platform. Like, and I think I've done the same with you, Pachi, where I'm like, I'm just going to send it on a different platform and just excuse the platforms. Um, but I think like the, the next one is like from a metrics perspective, um, I, the one, an interesting one that I have been using, and I'm like curious of like, if you have any like numbers metrics is number of content pieces that have been created by a like member of like a champions program over a period of time or number of mentions. So you can do mentions. And then the other one is the number of people, like what percentage of my champions program are paid at the start of one period, like are paying for a product at the start of one period and at the end of a period. So if it was like a four month period at the start, not all of them are paid, but like, what if, can you show that you possibly helped contribute to that upgrading to a paid account or reduce the number of support tickets? And I think those are kind of some interesting, I'm like a fan of like the the goofy metrics of kind of trying to figure out so what, but yeah. What's the question? I. Do you have any numbers metrics? Sorry, I was oh. like getting excited about my goofy <laughs> metrics. I'm thinking about that through a pause. You like your metrics. I like my numbers. Um. I mean, I love numbers too. And I'll say this, something that you said earlier is like checking in on, on your community members when they're having bad days or they're not doing something right is like, I follow a very scientific method. If something happens once, that's not a, that's not a, that's not a valid scientific experiment, but if it happens multiple times and that's a valid repeatable experiment. So maybe, so obviously Pachi has more experience this with this. So maybe that's something that Pachi could talk more about though. I am not great at numbers. <laughs> the, the great thing is like I have people to do the numbers for me and analyze that. I'm a very feeling person. Like I get the feel for things. And that's the great thing with, with community. You can't do that. You can feel the vibe of people. Um, especially with, like I say, with the program. Like I'm doing this thing. Is this person great for the program or they're not? Why? Why not? Sometimes person is awesome. They're just not your vibe and that's important so yeah so i don't have big numbers for you all that's okay you should, uh, you should like numbers well but yeah <laughs> and i think it takes all types right like i'm a i my my community confession is always the uh i am not an ops person ops is not my strength ops is not my jam do not make me do ops especially of like event planning ops i'm like oh this is not my no, I, mm, 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 mm. but the uh, very much like product feedback and is a very big, like exciting thing about champions programs and like getting that stuff. So moving forward, where do we see the evolution of champions programs? And I'm going to say some potentially controversial things because I heard, uh, I was prepping for this talk. I had folks curious about NFTs and providing value to champions programs. I, I saw the reaction happening. I figured I'd throw it out there. And the other question I have is if you're listening in right now, feel free to drop a question in the Discord and we will raise it up here. But Web3, is this a thing? Is this not a thing? How much do we need to pay attention to it? Not everything. Is that not a thing? <laughs> yeah, not e- that. Yeah, I was the one who on uh, at, at back at New Relic, and now even I'm still the one that's talking about Web three. Um, I'm very deeply ingrained in the community by accident. Um, I am part of the uh, Web three diaspora on Twitter, but uh, I think that 
not everything needs to be an NFT. Not everything needs to have Ethereum behind it. Not everything needs to have Solana behind it. Not everything needs to have some sort of tokenization behind it. Um, you could do something like a, a po Pope, however you pronounce it, P-O-A-P, um, like proving that you were at like events and things like that. Just like, but is it necessary? Like ask yourself, is that really necessary? <laughs> Maybe like for you could use collab land to to gate your discords with people who have the NFTs. But again, like, is that necessary? Do you need that? Mm -hmm. Like if your company mm -hmm. is fully based off of discord, having an NFT to 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 token gate some of your channels might be a good idea for your for your uh, edit, for your for your champion holders. But my question is, what happens when someone leaves? Yeah. What do you do? You so can't take that NFT back. My my take uh, my conclusion is, is don't it, stress. It, you don't. Yeah, need, don't it's stress. not. You don't don't it's stress about not it. Not needed. It's a gimmick at some point. Sorry, I just like. Ooh. I don't know. Sorry. Like if if you're a Web three oh. company, using something like Collabland to token gate certain channels for a champion program would make a lot of sense. But like if you're a Web two company, like is it really necessary? Probably. Uh, I don't even think like some of the things. I don't even know if it's. Relevant for a Web3? I'm not a Web3 person, so I probably shouldn't. But the the core like message of it is like, you know, TLDR, people come first. Highlight the important... I'm trying to recap this all in a sentence. We've got about five <laughs> minutes left here. TLDR, the too long, didn't read, is champions programs are going to be happening. We'll be seeing them in the future. They're not going anywhere. You know, make sure that it's optional. Make sure that you're treating people with kindness and building inclusive environments. Anything I miss for the future of the world of champions programs? Hire people local. <laughs> hire, hire local hire people, local don't people. like. Or pay like, local talent. Pay local talent. Um, the other one is uh, don't, imp like, uh, don't import talent in is another big one. Um, what else did we go over? I'm like, wow, we went over a lot of stuff today. I hope this was helpful mm -hmm. for y'all listening in. Um, also, Championship programs makes friends for life. Straight up, some of my best friends are from champ, but for are from Cassidy's championship program. Like, and I still talk to them on a regular basis. So just know that like what you're doing is more like is community building to a T. It really yeah. is. I mean, Pachi and I originally crossed paths on the internet uh, like years ago in the e-com world, which is so great. Yeah. And like, Whoa. I remember when you started, so yeah, in mean, like totally different industries. So, and there's people that I've been very fortunate to be in champions programs or beta programs. And they also follow you too, which is cool. So if you were building a successful champions program, there are folks that I've known for years from different roles or careers. So Make, like champions programs, let's rename them to rename them to friendship programs. Friendship programs, <laughs> like, maybe not. I don't know. Priorities. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, like any other, I see a speaker question in the, the little Discord chat. Um, we got I'm like, just... I'm like always, yeah. Cat, all the, the 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 crowd has spoken. Leave the NFTs to. Not this. I, I think I would tend to agree to like all of that. Um, you don't need an. <laughs> if you're going to do something Web3 related, make sure that you have community buy in because there, it is a highly divisive piece of technology. And so you need to be sure that what you're doing isn't going to estrange a lot of your community. So just be careful with that. And and so as as Caitlin says in, in the chat, Web3 is for Web3, Web2 stick to Web2. Well, I also think that, and this goes beyond Web 2, Web 3, Web 1 million, understand why you're doing something. Yes. Understand your intention. And do not feel pressured to go to the trend. So if you do not have the resources at your internal company to start, this is my pet peeve in the community space and DevRel space. don't need paper gas. Like, yeah, it's like, do you need a community? And then it's like, my first response is, are you prepared to support a community? Oh. If you're not, then we probably like, let's go back to the drawing board. Probably not, not worth having at this current moment. But again, understand why you're working on something. Understand what you're doing. Hire local, Communities hire diverse are not ones. set it and forget it. It is a consistent 
investment that you and your team must be ready to make and you is shutting down a community is a big deal. So you need to be prepared to invest in that from day one and continue to invest in it on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. And a champions program is work on top of the community. Mm-hmm. On like extra work. It's bon- it's it's extra stuff. So again, be kind, be inclusive. Don't be afraid of doing the work. It does have a lot of really great results and can have a lot of great results. But if you don't do it right, it's going to bite you in the butt more than just a regular program. But okay, three minutes. Mm -hmm. Um, Three minutes left on here. Uh, Where can we find you if people are like wanting to hang out and learn more about what you're up to and stay in touch with y'all? Twitter. I'm always on Twitter. I'm too often on Twitter. (laughs) <laughs> I am addicted to social media. Um, I am at ending with Ali on everything, including Minecraft. So if you want to play Minecraft with me, but I live stream on a regular basis, uh, live.ali.dev. That's L I V E dot A L I dot D E V. And then you can find me everywhere at E N D I N G W I T H A L I. Short and simple to the point uh, and consistent across the board. And she's really awesome Minecraft. Let me tell you, she really plays that hardcore. Yeah, I saved every time we played Minecraft yeah, at New Relic. Like, I was the only one who was like, there are zombies. Like, I got this. Yeah, she was like. I now want to play Minecraft with you. Um, Please. <laughs> like, I would love to. Pachi, where can we find you out online? And plug all those cool things here. Yeah, so Pachi codes. I cannot spell like Ali. Like, seriously. <laughs> I would, I would get lost. C H I C O D E S. Potty codes. Yeah, what she say? <laughs> so yeah, like I am not everywhere, but Twitter is the place where you can get to answer because if I say notification on Twitter, I have to click on it. So yes, <laughs> DM me. I got I answer yes. super fast. Really. Yeah. Yes. No. Pachi's great about answering DMs. Um, I am actually terrible at my Twitter DMs. Uh, so someone invent a better tool for that or Twitter, please listen into that. Uh, it but thank you so much. Anxiety. Yeah. Yeah. Let me know if anybody has any questions and it was so good. Thank you both for joining today. This was super fun and I'm glad we got this like stream together. So, you know, yeah. Devrilcon deep dives. Yeah.